Completed in 1937, the Golden Gate Bridge was the longest suspension bridge of its day, an engineering marvel achieved against great odds through the gritty determination of a team of dedicated workers. Gate Bridge was built during the Great Depression and I think at that time jobs were so scarce for everybody and uh, I think getting a job at the bridge was pretty special because that was full-time work. A few of the lucky ones hired to work on the bridge were Harry Fogel, Charlie Heinbockel, and Rolf Jensen. I worked on the bridge 1933 to 1937. Yeah well that was a time when of course many many people were looking for jobs and they just weren't available. Go line up a full block waiting to get in to see if they could get a job. A full block every day. You were lucky to have a job at that time. I figured I was anyway. We were making $11 a day, and that was considered pretty good wages at that time. Harry Fogel came to the Golden Gate Bridge in 1936 as an experienced bridge painter. Six of us, I think, that went over from the Bay Bridge and uh, the man asked if anybody had worked on the cables before. And I said I had, I just came over from the Bay Bridge, so he said, well, you wouldn't mind taking the long one here then. So I took the one next to the towers. That's where I started. It was a quarter inch cable on the winch, and you just crank yourself up or down. It took about all day to get down one, so you'd eat lunch about halfway up there. And uh, on a windy day, it wasn't the nicest place to have lunch. Was. Working at a height of 700 feet to paint the main cables and suspender ropes, Harry was a member of the gutsy group known as the High Gang. Actually, it didn't bother me at working that high because uh, after about 200 feet, you don't make any difference anywhere. You're going to be dead if you fall off. As construction workers, Charlie Heinbockel and Rolf Jensen did a variety of different jobs. I was paid $27.50 a week. It was five and a half a day. From 8 in the morning till 4.30. And what I did was just uh, manual labor, whatever had to be done, they'd call on me. The most difficult job I had was where the cable came up, it couldn't rub on the steel. So they put a big wooden block underneath, and I had to get underneath and screw it up. That was a scary job. But most of the time was pushing concrete around. Well, the big anchor blocks, they would pour a full day of concrete. And you were up there with your hip boots pushing it around because you just had to keep tamping it, tamping it to uh, set the concrete properly. So you were there for eight, 12 hours sometimes. Now this is where Rolf and Charlie actually worked on the pylons and the anchorage here at the south end of the bridge, doing the forming for the pylons and the anchorage and actually pouring the concrete to build these immense structures here to support the main cable and protect the bridge. Even though it was painstaking work, there was still fun to be had, and the workers found ways to personalize the experience. Charlie Heinbockel drank a beer at the top of the bridge. I used to go up to the top and uh, drink my mother's home brew and take a pint of it to work with me every day. <laughs> then, of course, when I finished, what was I going to do with the bottle? Well, fortunately, there was plenty of space out there. And just threw the bottle over and got rid of it. During the concrete pour, Rolf Jensen tossed coins into the mix. So you're pouring a concrete, you threw money in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why'd you do that? For the hell of it. For the hell of it. <laughs> All right, that's a good reason. Okay. 
The men who built the bridge faced harsh elements. High winds, fog, strong currents, and great heights. Chief Engineer Joseph Strauss made safety a priority. Safety was very important during the building of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, Joseph Strauss uh, was really important to him to have a safety net underneath the whole bridge while they were working. Uh, in case anybody fell off the bridge, they would fall into the safety net. And he also wore hard hats at that time and he wore safety belts. So I think safety was uh, a priority and it was very important to them make sure that they were protecting the workers. When you looked out there across the Golden Gate and realized that you were going to be on top, yes, it was a great concern. Dangerous, you know. It's windy. They made sure you had your safety belt and a, a hard hat. Very important. The Golden Gate Bridge was one of the safest ones I ever worked on. Even though safety precautions were taken, some tragedies did happen, like the scaffold accident, where the scaffold broke loose from the railing and it fell through the safety net, and the workers that were working on that fell into the bay and were killed. Well, I, I worked with uh, three of them that were swept out to sea. Two of them were Charlie Lindris and Chris Anderson. I worked with them. Oh, well, that particular day we were working on an outside scaffold. Outside scaffold. I got out of it. But they stayed in, and eventually it just gave way and out they went to sea. I could have been in there too. Fortunately, I wasn't. The Golden Gate Bridge means different things to different people. For locals, it's a breathtaking drive into San Francisco. For visitors from around the world, it's a landmark of great beauty and grace. And for the men and women who work on the bridge. It's a sense of pride and accomplishment. It's a beautiful bridge. It's known all over. It's one of the greatest projects that was ever built, and to have been part of it, working on the bottom and working on the top. I was quite proud of that. It was considered one of the biggest and best at the time. Everybody wanted to see it. Wonderful. I'd like to do it again. You want to hire me? <laughs> you want to hire you? Let me see. OK, yeah, we can use you out there. You want to be a bridge painter? <laughs> I want to sit on a chair. You want to sit in a chair? You want my job, right? <laughs> I love working here. I think it's just it's a privilege and an honor to take care of a world icon like the Golden Gate Bridge. I think people that see the Golden Gate Bridge compared to seeing the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast, that when you come to see the Golden Gate Bridge, you know you're home. It's just quite a sight. Unbelievable stuff. <laughs>